It's an interesting thing to try to put together a 12-week course. Uh, particularly the courses, the courses that I put together, uh, I, I make sure that they have something to do each day. Uh, you know, uh, a, little, uh, a, a little project, uh, and that project will lead into the next day, will lead into the next day, will lead into the next day, will lead into the next week, and so on. So putting that together was really quite a challenge uh, to make, uh, make the courses cumulative since starting off, uh, you know, sort of at baseline and then moving uh, step by step uh, as, uh, as we go. And what, what resulted for me was I feel like the students who are taking the online courses, I think, are probably getting a better education than the students sitting in, in, in front of me in the classroom. And there's no substitute for writing something, you know, having a project that you have to complete on Monday and then on Tuesday another one that builds on that and so you are engaging your writing muscles five days a week which I don't think you know uh, students in the classroom are necessarily doing uh, so so I'm uh, I'm really proud of the the Brooklyn music classes now, for example my uh, tools and strategies course which uh, I had a lot of fun putting together. Deals with uh, uh, surprisingly tools and strategies, uh, and it's, it's so it's a good name because uh, anyway, tools and strategies. The tools uh, uh, that you need cover your whole person. Uh, writing a writing a good song is a hard thing to do. Uh, and you need to bring everything to the table that you've got. You know, generally speaking, you bring who you are and you bring what you know, those two things. Uh, who you are has to do with the experiences that you've had, uh, the way that you look at the world, uh, 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 what happened to you when you were four years old, and. You know all of these all of these things that have formed your character and formed your way of looking at things, uh, and uh, we uh, we try to get the students to bring themselves to the table. You know, frankly, I don't think anybody's got a chance as a writer unless they you know are somebody's kid, uh, some famous person's kid, or something. And even then, but I don't think anybody's got a chance as a writer if they're writing something anybody else could have written. I think that, uh, that your only chance as a writer is to write what only you could write. And that means that you're writing about what it is that you have uniquely experienced. Um, and I'm talking about uh, using your senses, using your sense memories. Uh, there's a, a wonderful uh, uh, exercise uh, in writing better lyrics and uh, one that uh, happens on a daily basis in uh, tools and strategies called object writing, where uh, you are, well, actually in, uh, in the uh, tools and strategies course, every day you'll log on and there'll be this little box uh, that has a timer in it. And uh, you hit start and it'll give you a word like feather. And so for five minutes as the timer ticks down or 10 minutes as the timer ticks down or 90 seconds, as the timer ticks down, you engage that word with your senses. Uh, and I, 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 I want to emphasize that the word feather, for example, is only a launching point, that it's just a place to start, that you almost free associate from your senses. So for example, feather uh, may go into uh, 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 floating, uh, uh, feeling the air streaming against your face, uh, your hair being blown back, uh, uh, putting your hand out the window uh, and pretending you're an airplane, uh, and feel, feeling, feeling the pressure uh, as, as, as it rises, uh, throwing the baseball as hard as you can from left field, trying to catch the runner. Uh, with taste of dust in your mouth and grass stains all over your face, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that you're just free associating uh, and staying close to your senses. The reason that that's important, of course, 
is that when you engage your listeners' senses, as I just have, uh, uh, what happens is that my words are full of your stuff. So that the grass stains or the throwing the baseball or the putting your hand out the window. I mean, I know where I was uh, in that little memory that I have of putting my hand out the window. I was on a uh, gravel road um, driving uh, across North Dakota from Minnesota to Montana to visit my grandparents when I was about eight years old. Now, I don't think that anybody who had that little image going on in their head was exactly that place. Uh, so, so that, the, but, but you were someplace, and it, it stimulated you in some way, and consequently, my words are full of your stuff. That is to say, that song now becomes about you. You're invested in it. So that's one of the, one of the uh, most effective tools that you can use as a songwriter is that sense-bound language. Uh, so, that, uh, so that you immediately engage your listeners memories, your listeners' experiences, and make, make the song belong to them. So object writing, that is who you are, you have to bring that to the table. And there's also a whole series of metaphor exercises, which uh, uh, I think is, goes, goes hand in hand with the object writing stuff. Uh, how do you see the world? What kind of thing do you see? Uh, uh, Aristotle said that, uh, that the only truly creative human act is to be able to see one thing as though it were another. Uh, and that is to say the ability to create metaphor. Uh, other than that, nothing is creative according to Aristotle except for that. And so you can look at almost any, uh, any creative act that, uh, that humans do and see that really what it is, it's seeing a series of sounds as though it were a linear motion in a rhythm, in pitches, that creates an emotion. And so you're seeing one thing as though it's another. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you, when, you look at, uh, when you look at the wave curling in and you see the wind blowing uh, the foam from the top of the wave back, uh, and you see that as, uh, as uh, Eliot did, as combing the white hair of the waves blown back. Suddenly the waves become this uh, bent over aging person that uh, is about to crash to, its de to his or her death on the, uh, uh, on, on the beach uh, and with the waves and the waves and the waves coming after it. And suddenly the, uh, the waves are now about human generations. Uh, it's, uh, so so look, looking at the waves now makes you look deeper and deeper and deeper and you start engaging yourself um, w with all of that. So the metaphor thing, so bringing who you are to the table and then bringing what you know to the table. And what you know, that's the various techniques, and, uh, techniques that, uh, uh, th that you have at your disposal. In my uh, Tools and Strategies course we talk about uh, uh, number of lines that you use and uh, the, the key of course is always to support your emotion. Uh, the appropriate relationship between what you're doing, everything according to Aristotle in a great work of art creates unity. Everything works together and that's a statement of prosody. That's a statement of uh, the appropriate relationship between elements and I think that prosody is the single most important concept not only in songwriting but in art that this this whole notion of everything works together if it's not working it shouldn't be there uh, and everything supports that main point and so the, the whole notion of how you put something together uh, uh, to support the emotion uh, I, I, I think of it in terms of two words prosody in terms of two words stable wax on unstable wax off and that basically seems to cover just about everything you know I'm I'm uh, I'm saying uh, to you uh, it's been so long since I've seen you uh, where have you been uh, now I can say that as hey it's been so long since I've seen you where have you been uh, and there's no I, I, I'm asking for an answer there it, it feels Stable. Hey, it's been so long since I've seen you. Where have you been? Okay. Uh, as opposed to, it's been so long since I've seen you. Where have you been? 
Okay, now that, this is the emotion there is unstable. Okay, so how am I feeling in that thing? Where uh, am, I, am I saying, hey, hey, good to see you again, buddy. Or am I saying, oh, uh, and I know how I feel. And so I say, okay, well, I'm feeling kind of unstable. I really miss this person. All right, so what, uh, what tools do I have? since any tool can be used for anything, what tool do I have that can create the right kind of instability, the sense of longing, or maybe even more, the sense of anger, or this sense of hopelessness, or whatever it is? Uh, what tools can I use to just to create the sense of, oh, gee. Um, and so I open my toolbox, and there's a number of lines, lyrically speaking, there's a number of lines which we spend time on in the course. This is the length of your lines. When two lines are the same length, it feels stable. When two lines are different lengths, it feels unstable. Uh, uh, the, uh, the rhythms of the lines, uh, some, uh, uh, stable repeating rhythms or unstable uh, syncopated rhythms, uh, rhyme scheme, uh, A-A-B-B is very stable, A-B-B-A is very unstable. Uh, and the rhyme types that you use. And we spend a good deal of time dealing with rhyme types. Because rhyme types are just like chords. Uh, perfect rhyme gives you stability. Uh, when you start going through the five different kinds of rhymes all the way to uh, consonance rhymes, you start feeling unstable. So for example, uh, Warren Zevon writes, she's so many women, he can't find the one who was his friend. He's hanging on to half a heart but he can't have the restless part, so he tells her to hasten down the wind. So you got a rhyme between friend and wind, and the feeling is, <laughs> it's all right, dude, I'll be fine, just go, I just want you to be happy. You know, that, as opposed to, she's so many women, he can't find the one who was his friend, he's hanging on to half a heart, but he can't have the restless part, so he tells her to hasten round the bend. And now suddenly he just wants her out of there. Uh, and that's just created simply, I mean, it's not such a big difference between hasten down the wind and hasten around the bend. You know, in terms of meaning, you know, the wind is a little more poetic. But really, the emotion that's created in, in the contrast between those two is simply a function of the rhyme types. It's kind of like putting a four chord underneath the last syllable as opposed to a tonic chord underneath the last syllable. Uh, and so rhyme is a, is a huge player, rhyme type is a huge player and we spent a lot of time working exercises in the tools and strategies course. So those five elements are huge there. And uh, so every day that you're uh, in the tools and strategies course, you're doing some object writing and then you're working with, uh, with either length of lines or number of lines or rhythm of lines or rhyme scheme or rhyme type. Uh, and you're also working with metaphor uh, and just creating sections. Uh, and so it's uh, turns out to be a, a, a pretty interesting uh, uh, daily trip to the gym. Uh, and once you decide on a daily trip to the gym, your muscles are going to start getting toned. And it's not going to hurt because you're doing it daily and you're not doing too much every day. As opposed to you know, sitting down and doing it all in one day, uh, which I discourage uh, simply because you're not engaging the muscle on a continuing basis. Writers write. Writers think about writing. And if you get up in the morning and do your object writing, you'll be thinking about writing all day long.